So, okay. So, thank you all for coming. Um, as uh, I think you can tell, uh, uh, the Northeast Addison Television is uh, uh, making a recording of these proceedings. They uh, will put it up on their website. That's uh, neat, N E A T, Bristol.com. Um, so, your hosts tonight are really uh, the Municipal Building Committee. We've been uh, working for actually a couple of years. It frightens me to say this. Um, if I could have a building committee members stand up. We are. So, so we're really here to listen to you tonight. So um, at the end of the evening, if you don't think you've communicated with somebody or you really, you know, find us, come talk to us. We're here to listen to you. And the real point of this particular meeting is before we put pencil to paper on, on a design for a community center, we want to hear from the community. Um, the process tonight, uh, let me just, I'll just sort of quickly paint it. Um, um, you have to listen to a presentation from the architects. Um, it's like, like one of those timeshare things. And then, and then, <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and, exactly. And then, and then we have pizza and whatnot, so we're going to take a break for that around 6.30. That'll give you a chance to discuss. As part of their presentation, there's some questions and, and, um, uh, uh, things that they'd love to get uh, feedback from you on. Um, we'll probably do a little Q&A after that based on those um, uh, cards, those little index cards that you have. Um, and then after that, we'll probably break up in formal groups, um, find one of the, the uh, building committee members or um, one of the architects if you have some stuff that you still um, want to make sure it gets communicated. Um, this will be the first of three um, community outreach um, meetings. The next one will be on uh, November the 19th. And at that time, we'll actually have a design to show you and get some real solid feedback from. It'll, it'll be based on what we hear tonight. Um, uh, I think that... Um, just a quick little bit of context, as I'm sure everyone here knows, this is not our first first try through um, a new town building. Um, but this is the first one that we've done uh, using an architect. Before we've done what's called design build. We decided as a, as a group, and managed to convince the select board, um, we decided that we would prefer to go with um, an architect. It gives us a lot more um, uh, uh, interactivity as part of the design process. Um, it it uh, guarantees a lot more community involvement um, and that there's a real chance at the back end that we can um, have more tradespeople uh, involved as part of the construction process. Um, we put out an RFP, we had lots of we were surprised at how many architectural firms, despite the fact that everybody's really, really busy, were interested in this project. Um, out of those architectural firms, um, uh, we chose uh, uh, Bellwether Architects, uh, Chris House, Houston. Houston. Thank you. Sorry, Chris. I, I know his first name very well. <laughs> and uh, Leah uh, McGab. And, um, um, so we chose them because they were very, very committed to this process, both to the process using community engagement, and they were the most excited about um, doing this project. So with that, I'll turn it over to them uh, for your presentation. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I just want to first start off by saying that um, Chris and I have worked with a lot of different committees, and we find this particular building committee to be very engaged very hardworking and uh, very interested in, in your input in a very sincere way. Uh, I just wanted to say that. Um, so the way tonight will work, uh, Stephen's already touched on it a little bit, but we're going to try and keep our presentation very concise and very short because we've got a lot to talk about. 
Uh, we'll talk for about 20 or 25 minutes. Uh, and then you get to have pizza. And you can um, chat amongst yourselves while you, while you get a slice or two down. And then we're going to open it up for questions um, and comments and discussion. Um, you'll all notice that there are some note cards and a 8.5 by 11 on your chair or on the table. Um, the, eight, the, the note cards are specifically for questions that you want to ask that you may not want to raise your hand up and ask. Um, but if you get it on a note card and get it to one of the building committee members who at that point after our presentation will be circulating, um, please do so and we'll try to address it publicly if we can. Um, and then there's also an eight and a half by 11 with a series of questions. Those questions are coordinated with our presentation, you'll notice. Um, we would love to get your input any way we can. We thought this might be a good way to get some from you specifically. Um, so at any point in the presentation or afterwards, answer one question if that's what you're comfortable answering. Answer them all if you feel like you have the time and space on that sheet to do it. Um, we just want any input you have for us. And if some of you don't have pens or if you don't have an eight and a half by 11 set of questions, there are a few extras up front here we can get to you. Um, and Heather in the back has spare pens. She's in yellow. Um, so, you know, just let her know and, um, and she will get you a pen. Excuse me. I want to make sure, can everybody hear? We have a microphone that we can use. They're hoping not to need it, but if somebody needs it, please speak up and we'll turn it on. And this is one that actually works, unlike one of the ones we use in the <laughs> So, is there anyone in the back who could not hear me? All right, good. Excellent. So with that, as Leah mentioned, we have a series of topics that we'd like to discuss with you tonight. We're going to give you a really brief background of where we've been. We're going to talk about why a community center now. We're going to talk a little bit about the, the input that we've received to date and how we're moving forward. We're going to look at the specifics of your site through an analysis in the village context of where, where your site is located. We're going to talk about design precedents, followed by a uh, discussion of really important project scope, which is two parts. One is the program, the other is the budget. And then we'll wrap up with a timeline and next steps. We're going to start um, a brief description of the background. Um, as many of you know, the town voted to buy the parcel in 2006. So that's 13 years ago, a number of locations have been considered to locate your new community center. We'll touch on those just a little bit. There have been three previous bond votes starting in 2010, 12, and 13, which we'll touch on in a moment. Through that process, as Stephen mentioned, uh, various design concepts were considered, um, and those we'll be looking at, but really we're going to be looking at how, you know, what is your input in moving forward. Um, also, three consecutive votes starting in 2017 where you, the residents, have voted to um, support $40,000 a year to a municipal bond, um, um, building fund. The new committee was formed in 2017. Uh, community surveys and informational sessions have been conducted uh, at a number of opportunities through this new committee. And as Stephen mentioned, um, we were hired uh, officially in, in August. So we're really uh, just beginning the work of understanding your community needs and, and what it is that you're looking for in a community center. This illustration, just a, a very simple timeline, uh, 2006, the residents uh, supported the purchase of this beautiful parcel of land. Uh, from then, it was uh, you know four years until the first bond vote, there was a quick series of those three um, um, votes that occurred uh, between 2010 and 13, and then there was a big pause for several years. The new committee was formed, um, and um, building funds of the last three years have been uh, approved, totaling $120,000. Um, and then, as we mentioned, we were hired, we are here at this point um, tonight, September, and moving forward, we're going to be moving into schematic design, for your bond vote and then with construction commencing if approved by the by the um, by the residents uh, construction will commence in august so the question why a community center now 
Um, well, some of you may be familiar with some of these images. Um, obviously, the, the town hall as it is, uh, the, the building is deteriorating. There's no potable water in the building. It's an energy consuming building. Uh, there's very little privacy or uh, good meeting places, uh, good places to meet. We have had a couple meetings there and people are walking in and out throughout the meetings and sometimes we don't know who's in the meeting and who isn't. Um, it's a, a functionally challenged environment, working environment. Uh, there's obviously not enough place uh, to store records um, and I don't know if there are regulatory issues with that. I would presume that there are. Um, and the, there are parking safety issues. Uh, the library uh, similarly is running out of space. Uh, there's a growing book collection and there's nowhere to put the books. Um, children's programming is challenged because there's not a lot of space to, for a lot of children uh, to sit. Uh, there are, it's lacking reading, adequate reading and work areas. Uh, storage space is limited, limited and staff areas um, are, are lacking. Um, there's just simply not enough space. It's only 700 square feet. It's a, it's a, it's a very small library. Um, and it is certainly difficult for the mobility impaired. Um, the other reason is that you as a town own a beautiful parcel that has been designated for this opportunity. Um, a lot of planning and input um, went into the purchase of this property. Uh, and of course, as Chris mentioned, there's the Building Municipal Fund, which now has um, a good sum in it that uh, you as town members have voted three times now to, to add to. Um, and the other reason is because by building, it takes a community to build a building, and a building can therefore also build community. There are a lot of programming possibilities um, that have not been exploited. Um, and a new building would, um, could be invaluable as a community building element in your, in your town. Um, so community input, we've talked a lot about that. Um, we're trying to get as much of it as possible. The building committee has worked hard to do that as well. And so far, this is what we've heard. Um, now the building committee has worked to get sur through surveys, um, hosting open houses and informational meetings. Um, we have heard that the community is concerned about cost and tax burdens. Um, we have heard also that the town as a whole is interested in preserving the historic character of their town and the town character itself. Um, we have also heard that they, the, you as a town want to design flexible spaces that can be used uh, for multiple programming opportunities. And lastly, we've also heard that not only is a town hall important and a library important, but these two can be combined as a community center. That's something that can give to the entire community. And once again, I just want to remind you that we do want to hear your ideas. And as we proceed, you'll notice we'll be asking some key questions as they relate to certain topics that we're going to follow. And those question, key questions that we will show up here are also on that meeting. The, your site is absolutely beautiful. We're going to spend a few minutes talking about um, the parcel as it relates to your village context specifically. You have a, a very well defined street edge here, you know, right on Moncton Ridge. Absolutely beautiful uh, location. Depending on where the building is, is placed and how it is designed, could absolutely enhance your sense of community and a sense of village. As it happens, we do tend to use these, um, you know, these drone pictures as, as a unique way or another t tool to look at your, um, your town from a slightly different perspective. Uh, clearly, this is you know, looking, um, here's, the, here's the parcel, the church, your current uh, town hall right there. Relative to views, uh, spectacular views both east and west to um, you know, the Adirondacks and the Green Mountains. You also have really um, prominent views looking up and down uh, Moncton Ridge to to this um, to your property. These are just a few of the views. Camel's hump in the background. 
uh, Cedar Lake and the Adirondacks. As we, with any, any project that we begin, we're going to look very carefully at the natural features. It's, it's, a, it's fundamental to, to beginning with sustainable design. These are the, the things that we know. Your solar access is something that we're going to be very attentive to. How do we maximize that as an opportunity? How do we take advantage of um, prevailing summer breezes? How do we block some of the winter winds that we really don't want to um, have in the building? How do we take advantage of what is a fairly steep um, site towards the front of the property, towards the easter, easterly edge, it's, uh, it's fairly flat, but as you, as you move to the west, it, it drops off. How do we work with that? So the key questions that we'd like you to be thinking about relative to the site, should the new building be close to the street or set back? How should the building take advantage of these site views? How important is the is it to make the building energy efficient or even net zero? So when thinking about the site, we're also thinking about what this building should look like um, and what some precedents for town halls um, in, the, in the region are. Um, and this is just a, a quick collage of some of the er areas, um, town halls or community centers, um, with, of course, your, your current town hall right in the middle. Um, your current town hall is a Greek revival. Um, we know in style. Um, we know that because of the uh, the very pronounced wide plasters on the on the side of the building, on the corners, um, by the entablature that sits on top of those plasters, and then the uh, classic Greek triangular pediment. These are just some standard features of a Greek revival that, and this is a wonderful example of that style. Um, this is an example of a more Victorian-influenced town hall, and this is a sort of classic shaped uh, town hall, but with Italianate details. Um, some f when we when we look at a design of a um, of a new town hall, we're also or community center, we're also thinking about some of the features it might have. Um, a porch is one feature. It's a lovely place to stand in under, un, out of the rain and to talk to your neighbors. Um, a steeple or a cupola is a common feature on many town halls and community buildings uh, traditionally, whether or not they're used as a bell tower, as ventilation, or as a reference to um, uh, a church. And then, of course, You'll find that many traditional town halls in the area are two-story, and I think that might have something to do with um, having a strong street presence and representing it as an important civic building. Um, and I also just want to make two points about um, new versus old. New construction, even though this is not an example of anything that we would propose, it's just a random example of a, of a new community center. It's bigger than the one we're talking about here. Um, but I want to make the point that it doesn't necessarily cost more to build a traditional style. And second, as this process proceeds, as we go into schematic design, we also are going to want your input on what you like and what you don't like. So some things to be thinking about and hopefully responding to us with, with your, your feedback are what does an important town building look like to you? What are some features that you would expect in a community building? And how do you see yourself interacting with people in or around the building? So the next, um, <clears throat> the next series of slides, we're going to talk very specifically about what we're calling project scope. Two parts. One is the program. What are the functions of the building? And secondly, the budget. Relative to the types of spaces that we're talking about, town offices have you know your standard offices, treasurer, and so on. You're going to have a vault. Um, you'll have workspace. There'll be a series of shared spaces that will be common, and then you have library. You know, typical library um, spaces, circulation spaces, and things like that. Here we've. Um, had a little bit of fun just beginning to think about the types of organizations and clubs that could be or could utilize uh, this new community center. 
One thing that we're, we're finding, and, and common sense would have it that if you're able to take a majority of the spaces in this proposed community center and have them be shared between the town offices and the library, there is absolutely going to be a synergy and an overlap of those, of those functional spaces, therefore making it more cost effective. If you can have a, a space that's multifunctional, it's going to be far more um, cost effective than building two separate buildings. There are energy savings, operational savings, and so on. So we're really looking at these types of spaces, this community meeting space uh, that will not, we've been talking about it being about 50 people, serving about 50 people, because you have other spaces in, in town just like this, so you don't want to duplicate those. There'll be a kitchenette, shared restroom, storage, mechanical, outdoor spaces, and parking that all, all could be shared. So some, and we're really just scratching the surface, frankly, on you know, really talking about um, the types of programs that could be included in these buildings. We'll really be getting into that more in our next, um, in our next presentation. The things that we'd really like to hear from you tonight about, what are some of the possible ways that the community um, could you make use of a new community center? So thinking broadly, you know, weddings, um, PT, just a whole range of, of uh, types of, of um, activities. And are there new ways of thinking about a library? Again, we could talk a lot about that tonight. Um, we would like to hear from anyone who has thoughts, um, perhaps uh, during the Q&A, about what the library, how that might function. So now, as we get into the all-important discussion of budget, we really would like to hear from you tonight about you know, how you're feeling about what this project uh, might cost. One of the questions that we get very, very often that we'd like to discuss is why is a municipal project so expensive to build? There are a number of reasons. Proper planning, we've worked on many municipal projects in the past. Proper planning starts with a long list of an inclusive um, total project budget that includes all of the different associated costs with the project. It's not just the construction costs, it's all the other pieces like professional fees. Um, when we talk construction costs, we're talking uh, site work as well as the building. Um, owner's costs, there are permitting fees, um, perhaps there's furniture and equipment that needs to be purchased, insurance, etc. cetera. Um, and then some of the aspects that make a community center very unique and special, if the building is two-story, it will require an elevator, so that's sort of an added expense. Um, there are some very specific requirements relative to a town office building, such as a vault that needs to be four hour fire rated, and there are very specific regulations around those things that make building a building like this very different than, a, than building a house. So to talk specifics in a range of costs, we've been uh, discussing with the building committee that for a combined uh, community center, um, town office, library, and community spaces, our total project budget range of between 1.2 and 1.7 million. Um, this would result in a tax increase in a range. Again, we haven't even drawn the building yet, so this is talking um, reasonably hypothetically, but testing what your reaction is to these numbers. Tax increase of, of 3.69 cents to 5.54 cents on the municipal tax. So that would translate into, for every $100,000 of property value, <clears throat> the tax would increase to uh, between $36.90 to $54.50. So playing that out, if we're just going to use an, uh, an, a property value of $250,000, that would have a, an increase of between $92.39 per year and $136.41. The assumptions we're making, um, this information was provided to us by the committee. It's a 5% interest on a 20-year bond. Now, we've also been talking very specifically with the committee about potential cost offsets. This is critically important. Um, for any project, um, but we do believe uh, important for yours. There have been discussions about perhaps selling the existing town office and library buildings. 
um, Lee and I would um, be working with Efficiency Vermont right from the very beginning to maximize your incentives um, that can apply to your project. There are grants available, particularly to, for the library program, as well as capital, uh, uh, talking about a capital campaign. There could be offsets to operational costs, such as um, rental and things like that. And then to point out that the municipal building fund would no longer be needed if um, the residents approved a, um, a new community center in March. The key questions here that we want you to consider, will this investment enhance your community, perhaps your property values? Are you willing to invest in your community for today and for future generations? We want to point out that this would be minimally a 50 year to 100 year building. You know, this would not be, this is a, an important municipal structure that would last for many, many generations. And is there value in this investment to you? So quickly, to wrap things up, this is our last little segment, the timeline and next steps. Uh, we don't expect anyone to read that. If you can read it, then you're much better than us. Um, we're, we're, we're in the initial phase of community outreach, listening, gathering information. The, the, red, the red stripe is where we are tonight. Uh, the, the black dash line is the March bond vote. We have a whole series of activities leading up to the March bond vote. But essentially, the overall is to go from the community outreach into schematic design and then um, construction in August, as I mentioned previously. This uh, is sort of an enlargement of, of the process that we're taking uh, from, from now until, until March. So here we are at our first community meeting. As Stephen mentioned, our, our next outreach discussion is uh, Tuesday, November 19th, which is right here. And then another one just after the first of the year leading up to the, the March bond vote. And with that, we would um, like to thank you all so much for coming here. The fact that you're here shows that you're interested. So again, we'd love to hear more of your ideas. Um, and I think, I don't smell it yet. <laughs> Pizza is on its way. Um, so yeah, when it comes, take five or 10 minutes to start eating and then we'll, we'll um, hopefully have a conversation. Stephen, did you want to say something? No, I'm good. <laughs> That's fine. So, so we'll just take a, we're going to take a 20 minute break. Hopefully pizza will show up shortly, give you a chance to fill out some of those uh, questions um, that they posed, and uh, we'll go from there. And uh, if you have, needless to say, you get a buttonhole any municipal building committee member you want. <laughs> So, at this time, I guess I'd just like to open it up into sort of general questions. If somebody has a general question, um, you know, raise your hand and, and we'll, we'll start it off that way, shall we? And if I could add also, not even just if you have anything you want to express, it could be in the form of um, not even a question, it could be a statement. No, I've never seen so many shy people in my life. There you go. Or you can also just hand up the note cards, which were meant for you to write questions on if you didn't want to. Raise your hand or speak publicly. Uh, so earlier in your presentation, uh, you asked a question that's also on the sheet, which is uh, uh, how important it is to make building energy efficient or net zero? Um, so, uh, and you also offered a budget of like 1.3 or 1.7 million. So, a uh, two-part question. One is what uh, is the requirement for the building code in terms of the minimum energy efficiency? And then the other part is you know, 1.3, 1.7 million. Uh, what does 1.3 million bias in regards to the quality of energy efficient versus 1.7? So, sure. Just so the question was essentially, um, if, if anybody couldn't hear the full question, what can be accomplished for energy efficiency in that 1.2 to 1.7 number that we provided? And as part of that also is 
what are the energy standards uh, dictated by the, by the code, essentially. So a couple things, I'll start by saying, it's part of what we do as a standard practice is to look at, especially with municipal buildings, because energy, your annual energy cost is a, a cost to all of you. In order to, um, as part of you know, basic, our basic design services, minimizing that is in your best interest. The other thing I'll say is that um, through advances in technology such as um, all electric air source heat pumps, it has become relatively easy to create a building that is resilient. So that means that the, the uh, insulation and the air infiltration is, is um, you know, really robust that you can have an all-electric building uh, with no fossil fuel use and then have uh, photovoltaic you know, solar panels to offset your energy cost. And we feel that that can be accomplished in this, in this cost range. Now, what's going to be important is how, how large is the building because there are issues of quality and size that will dictate um, our ability to fall in that range. To that. Uh, building codes. So the stand, yes, the standards. Um, you on this property, it's not an Act 250. Uh, Act 250 does not have jurisdiction. If Act 250 had jurisdiction, you would be into the stretch energy code. The base energy code is um, a reasonable start. We feel very confident that we would be well above that baseline energy code as a starting point. It's, it's reasonably easy to accomplish that if you're attentive to um, the primary issues of, of you know, thermal bridging and air sealing and things like that. Uh, how much window, how many windows do you have and those sorts of things. <laughs> Calculator. Yeah, please. Along the same line, do you take into consideration the cost up front, the maintenance costs down the road, and the rebates that you're going to get? A lot of times to get these rebates, you've got to be way up there up front. And that can bring the cost of the building up. Right. And I'm in the mechanical field, right. so I know it needs fixing. <laughs> right. So having this right. So from a mechanical standpoint, having as simple a system to operate as possible, while also making it extremely energy efficient, is, is really really important. We would be working with our mechanical engineers as well as with Efficiency Vermont to look for the, the low hanging fruit. We would typically not go after the things that um, have a really high upfront cost that have a twenty to you know. 30 to 50 year payback. Um, so we, we definitely look at all of those issues all throughout the design process. Yes? Yes, uh, we're currently working um, on the Shawlot Library. Um, and that, that's in addition to that building. Uh, but they gave us some, some a really uh, nice incentives because we're going from a fossil fuel based um, system to to um, an electric system. But to clarify, we haven't started working with them on this project yet because we're right. not that far down the road. I know that most of the incentives are based on changing fuels and um, but I'm wondering if you can make the argument that you're changing a fossil fuel town hall. Is it a given that you're going to have it uh, the orientation of the building so it can have future solar panels if it doesn't have that. That would seem like a logical starting point, but we really haven't um, studied the you know the shape of the building and, and the size of the building and all those things. But that, that is one of our starting points. Yes. Can you just restate questions? Oh yes, I'm sorry. Yep. Um, I'm told we'll take one more question, and then we'll and then we'll go to pizza pizza break. Everybody's hungry, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why don't we break? Uh, is there 
Does anybody have, I mean, there's no cards, so if you don't like to raise your hand and, and, uh, and ask questions, if you have a note card, just uh, raise your hand and now somebody will come up and grab it. I don't see anybody, that's fine. Um, how about some questions? I, I, or what are you guys talking about? What's, what's, uh, what's of interest? Will, go ahead. So the, um, maybe it's more of a statement, but my, my thought is, uh, you know, one of the reasons we're here also right now is to get, um, is to help guide these guys with some ideas on the, what the building would look like. So um, at our next uh, meeting in November, we can actually look at some plans and some drawings. So when we look at those plans in November, we might be looking at a couple concepts, and those concepts we, we then can be a little bit more polished and be able to define that budget number. Because right now we're saying, you know, 1.2 to 1.7 million. And, you know, a lot of that is based off of kind of, uh, you know, market rate, price per square footage. It's not the best way to go, right? It's better to do an estimate based on a actual design. So at the next meeting, we're going to have um, some designs that we can look at and we can say, all right, um, what does this thing cost if we go above and beyond um, with energy efficiency? What does it look like if we do the bare minimum? So I think some of that stuff will become much more clear at that stage. But if today um, everybody starts to kind of really think about what the spaces will look like inside, if it's a one story, if it's two story, just to kind of like discuss more about um, the building on the site and some, um, some uses for it. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, if we're going to go for uses for it, um, with the slope of the land, with the views that you have, I cannot imagine building a building that doesn't use some of that so that it can be rented, used for other purposes, used for larger meetings. If you're going to build a building, it doesn't cost that much more to go down. So I would rather see the bottom be just like a church or any other community center where it's a large open space maybe plumbed for a kitchen in the future to one end where your mechanicals are. The back's looking out over the Adirondacks. You build a nice big stone patio off the back. You make it windows off the back and you rent it. And people can bring the kids there and do the uh, nursery group that's up at the United Methodist Church. Other people can use the space. But to build it on a flat foundation and then 20 years from now go, wow, would have been really nice to have a community space, you know. There's a lodge down in uh, Bristol, the Masonic Lodge. It took them a lot of years to dig underneath that church to finally put a basement in. It would have been a lot more efficient to build it up front. And I'm not talking about seven or eight foot ceilings. Build it up front with 10 foot ceilings so it's a space you want to go into. So if, if we're going to put the money into it, that extra money makes sense to me. We'll make the money back when we rent it. Great, thank you. We were having a, a debate at this table about energy efficiency and highly efficient versus shooting for net zero and wondering if you're shooting for net zero, have you gone beyond the point of diminishing returns? Is, is, are you chasing so much with that and putting so much expense into that that you've given up something else? And you know, I, I don't know, really know where the, where the crossover is and maybe we're too early to comment, but if you have any... It's, it's a really good question. Um, what we're finding is year after, or you know, as we advance one year to the next, to achieve a net zero, you know, net energy building is much more easily done, more cost effectively year after year. So the answer today might be a little bit different, frankly, than it is by the time we get to, even, even to a bond vote in March. Um, but we have, experience with several net zero buildings that frankly are becoming easier and easier to achieve just with the technology that's there and so much of it is pragmatic sort of common sense it's not it's not so far over the top whereas perhaps 10 15 years ago it, would have, it certainly would have been uh, much more difficult to achieve but the, but there is a point of diminishing returns where you invest a certain amount and then it does sort of level off yeah and the returns just 
they're hard so, to But we're in quite a different world now than we were when we were looking 10 years ago mm -hmm. at how might this building. Yes, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> um, um, we're going to track the capital side, and we're going to figure out the taxes and all that. On the operational side, I'd like somewhere to continue to also drag those numbers along so that we understand, you know, as a community, we're going to be paying the capital costs plus the operation. Because when you say technology, you say, oh, you know, in six months we may be here, we may be here. We, we gotta, we've got this whole maintenance thing, and somebody's going to say in five years, well, we can't find anybody who can even work on that anymore because nobody knows how to do it. And right. so you've got to replace it because it's obsolete. And so the technology gets us rolled right into a, a different quandary. And so it, it, I'm just wondering, the whole operational thing, when we think about fossil fuel and so on, it's like, the same boiler from 100 years ago is the one, you know, with a few modifications, but at least from that whole operational perspective, we've been able to, you know, keep that low. But here it seems like that's going to have as big effect of rising in the future than, than it has in the past. So to, to elaborate on that, we will, as part of our process, we will be looking at the, the point uh, that was just raised about that diminishing return. Our mechanical engineers will uh, provide energy modeling, which illustrate um, both the operational costs that you that the town spends today for two buildings, and then what the operational cost could be if you do a building of this type or that or that. Okay, so as Lee was just mentioning, the, the point of diminishing returns is, is typically in the building envelope, how much insulation you, you actually put in. You get to a point after which time the air tightness of the building becomes much more important than you know the R value of the wall, frankly. So um, those things we'll be looking at very carefully as we move you know forward. And, and those types of things we'll be looking at at a high level before the bond vote, and then at a much more detailed level as we move forward. Okay, so then going to other town halls and looking at what other people have done around energy efficiency. Things as simple as actually not just having the door open straight into the building. If you go down right. to Castleton, they have right. a vestibule. When you come in, yeah. you shut the doors, you go in the next door. Right. Um, so you're going to be just sort of playing with all those ideas. Yep. And going back to what Andy said, and I wasn't thinking about it, I mean, we're doing a lot on energy efficiency. There's other costs in terms of the upgrade, upkeep of a building. Mm -hmm. And you know, yes, an asphalt roof might be cheaper, but I'm noticing a lot of municipal buildings have standing seam roofs on them. Right. Probably because when you're talking about a 50 to 100 year building, wouldn't it be nice to not have to budget right. to redo a roof? So again, that's where if you can show us that it costs a little bit more now, <coughs> but you have the bond now, but you're not gonna have to replace a roof three or four times, right in our winter environment, that could be a huge savings over time to spend money up front. So I'd love to see those things, yeah. not just assume we're going to try to keep this low, yeah. you know, up uh, front. These are great points, and uh, these are the kinds of things, we call them, typically we call these like design alternates. So here's one option, is an asphalt shingle roof, and it could last anywhere from, you know, 10 to 20 years. Here's a standing seam metal roof. You, you, you have the initial cost of both those systems, one lasts easily twice as long as the other, and, you, and you know, it's a pretty simple evaluation. But we present those um, to you and to the building committee as options um, along the way. Yes? Um, I'm looking at a, a budget uh, sheet that I got off of the uh, Facebook page for this uh, committee uh, before coming here. Um, that you guys put together, and it looks like the, um, for now, right now, you're putting out a number of uh, one point, approximately 1.75 million, um, all inclusive before the buildings are sold, um, with uh, um, one point, uh, approximately 1.3 million for the actual building construction. Um, that's showing uh, 4,500 square feet, um, and so I guess my questions are, um, for this summary budget or sample budget, um, what are the assumptions in terms of building quality of um, for 4,500 square feet at 1.3 million? Um, and then you also have a, it's kind of an odd note here. It says five feet outside building per footprint. I don't know what that means. So, so, so um, I'm going to try to answer this simply. <laughs> 
Two, uh, a couple things. One is that summarize. <laughs> summarize the question. Yeah. Okay. So the question is that this gentleman looked at the website that the town has, and this the committee's done a really great job of putting all this information on the town website. So we have prepared, and I'll get to the question in a moment. We've prepared as a starting point a test budget. Okay, it is. It takes assumptions um, based on our professional, you know, experience as a starting point, and it's a it's a talking tool, right? So the question was, what are our assumptions on quality? Um, he noticed that the building is roughly 4,000 square feet in change, and we have a note that says that the building cost is for five feet outside of the building footprint. So clarity on budget issues is paramount. What we're saying is there's a cost for the building and five feet out, and then there's another cost assumption for the site. So that budget spreadsheet has a separate number because when oftentimes people say, well, how much did that building cost per square foot? And you get a whole range of context of what that square foot number is associated with. Is it the total number of the building and all the fees and everything, the permit fees all the way to the bottom, or is it just the building five feet outside of the building footprint? Well, the reason it's five feet is because that, that says that the rest of the site work is not is excluded from okay, the Okay, I just said that piece, and in yeah. regards to the assumptions about the building itself, like metal roof, asphalt roof, uh, you mentioned earlier the base energy code versus the stretch energy code, um, you know, fit and finish of the building, what assumptions are made there for that? Very few assumptions. So then how do you come up with a number if you're not making assumptions? Based on, so, to be clear, like, we can't say right now that that number has a standing seam roof. We, don't, we haven't even designed a building yet. So based on our experience here in this state at this time, those are the numbers that we're associating with a building footprint of approximately this, this you know, 4,000 square feet. We believe that within that number, we can have a highly energy efficient building, one that is durable. Is the, is the roof one thing or another? We, we don't know. Because there's so many trade-offs when yeah. you do a budget. But, so, it's based, but it's based on the fact that this is a municipal building yes. built to certain scopes yes. that are needed in a public use space, municipal building with a vault, with right. proper fire code, Blah, blah, blah. Really so those really assumptions are yeah. in there. Well put. Thank you. <laughs> 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 we're we're blah, 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 blah. Said that, uh, yeah, that you know, based on in this state of Vermont. So in, um, in based on the list that Mark just read, yeah. you know, what are you, you know, for that square footage, what are the typical construction problems you are seeing? Are, are, we, are you seeing, you know, when you hit that, you know, an average building like that is asphalt shingles, not metal seam? Or, you know, I mean, that's a, that is a good quality building. Okay, for that number, it's something that we would expect that, you know, it's not over the top. We, we, know, we know the town, we know that this has been through the process three times already. So that number is a very good starting point for a good quality building. And we would like to think that it would be a standing seam metal roof. Although once you break down the numbers... But you can't make that. You can't no, say that. Sure. We can't because say that. Because you might decide that you want it all to be cedar clabbered, whereas we were going to offer you something less expensive, and all of a sudden yeah. the equations change. Okay, so let me ask a related question. Sure. Um, I'm seeing approximately 4,600 square feet. Um, what does that 4,600 square feet encompass? Is that all of the program space? Is that... You know, it's just the town hall and, and you know, and kind of meeting we, rooms, or is that without doing a layout yet? We believe that it's all of the spaces that we've been talking about tonight, and that's basically that is roughly based on some of your past, um, um, you know, proposals. And let me just add that I appreciate how you want to nail this down. I really do. I get it. You want to understand what that money is going to get you, and I, we really look forward to having that discussion. But we're not there yet, and but when we are. This will be really fun to talk about. Is there a budget for the site work? Yes. <laughs> Who's the budget? <laughs> <laughs> it was like uh, 100. 140,000. That's parking, <laughs> utilities, that well, septic, well, septic, parking, parking driveway. Since we're building a new building, I would like to have some kind of inspiration. And I don't know how to do that, but. 
with um, modern materials and colors and lots of light and lots of modern things. And, and I don't really care what the outside looks like, but I want you, I think it's irresponsible to build a building that's not um, energy efficient. We're, we're running out of resources. So, we agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah, I do Thank want to feel inspiration when I go in, in some way. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Does this site have access to the pond, or is there a potentiality of having some kind of path for, say, like fishing classes for kids? Um, no, it does not. No. It does Sorry. not. But what we're not showing on these maps is it actually has a a, a thin sort of um, dog leg, if you will, that wraps to the south and actually comes, I believe it comes right around the cemetery, sort of loops back up to Moncton Ridge Road. Part of a ridge trail? Yes, <laughs> right. The you have a ridge trail? Right, it's, it comes, I'm sorry? I think it, one of your images showed the sketch. Um, oh, yes. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, thank, thank you. <laughs> He's all the way down around, right around the book. Other, um, yes? So um, there's a question of clean water down at the existing town hall site. Is there a question of clean water at this location? So we would, one of the first things, uh, activities uh, that we would have to do is confirm either a, a new drilled well or <clears throat> uh, have a conversation with the church to see if um, that would be an option because it would be a cost savings measure uh, for the new building to share the, the church as well. The church as well, let me just go um, each. Um, the church as well is like right about here. It's right on the edge of the northerly edge of the town <coughs> parcel. So we've, we've begun to investigate um, and we'll be having conversations as the as the process moves forward. So that's that's one option. The second would be to you know drill a new well. You would not be allowed to use a well that is not approved by the state. So that's part of the process. So and I just want to say as part of that discussion, the well that the church has is 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 good water. Got a little got a little salt salt. What? Yeah. Well, that's that's called that's called filter. But <laughs> I got I got that too. Every, a lot of people in Monk do. But that's a good uh, potable uh, water well. Curiosity. We're talking about water quality. What is the water quality at the current building? Or so I want to hear it out loud. Water so, quality at our current town hall. Stephen, did you get that question? I'm sorry. What is the quality of the water at our current town hall? It's, um, so our current town hall was uh, part of the, um, the bloom that came down from, uh, from I think it was the Bennett, was it? Budgie Bennett's, Budgie Bennett's uh, um, garage. So for years, the, the water at our current town hall, which actually that well just for your information, it's actually across the street at uh, right next to the uh, right next to the Russell Memorial Library. Um, uh, so we do not use that that water for drinking. Yeah. So we can't drink water at our current town hall. I'm sorry. We can't drink water at our current town hall. Okay. Good. Get bottled water in. There is a lot of people here who aren't familiar with the town history. So That's I fine. just like to, you know, the older people here may understand all this. I'd like everybody to understand. You can't drink the water at our town hall. Or, or the, the library. library. Or the library. So. Or the library. So. The numbers of other houses on the street. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't do anything about that. And there's no guarantee no, that well will be any different. That's Very true. Well, except that the, the church will be good. And while we're talking about water, there's no hot water at the library. Okay. <laughs> Other um, comments? Yes. What, did you do the community center town hall in Carisburg, or North Carisburg, or the, Gr the Grange? Grange? The Grange, yeah. Was that is that part of the is that their town offices? Yes. Now? 
I, I worked on that while I was with a, uh, another company. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I like I like that. It seems to blend in with the like the historic character and yeah. yeah. That was a, an existing building that was essentially recreated right. yeah. piecemeal. Burned down. Burned down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Other yes. So you talked about the size of the meeting spaces, and you said it's based on a 50-person meeting space. That's a starting point. Yeah, that's a starting point. So if we if you were to live in a 50-person meeting place, you couldn't have this meeting in that space. That yeah, leaves this yeah. right 75 years today. So that leaves this one gym that's again with our still only large meeting space to come. Right. So that's a really good. We did hear just to sort of recap. Uh, this gentleman was just saying that um, we have roughly 75 people here this evening. Um, that 50 person number came from looking at spaces that exist in town, such as this and um, the fire department, two of the sort of larger meeting spaces in town. And the committee to date has looked at, at that and said, okay, um, recognizing that it would be really great to be able to host a range of types of clubs and organizations, a 50-person meeting space is actually not really large, but that's one of those things that we will be looking at very carefully because we did get feedback through conversations that, you know, why is that space needed at all, period. Use this or use the fire department. So it's those types of things, um, you know, that, that, that we're hearing. There's a question over here. I was just going to back up the concept. I would like it to have a traditional New England look on yeah. the outside. I can envision um, a one story with, I love the idea of a porch, and then um, you know, dropping back to take advantage of the site dropping, go down and have the open up. Um, the comment was, uh, this one would like to see the building be very traditional and you know take advantage of the site topography. Uh, there was also a suggestion back here in conversation that if you had not looked at the Grange building, that that look and feel, many people think that's a very, you know, traditional representative of the town. Right. Yes. Question. Thank you. Question. Uh, so back to water, uh, <laughs> storm water. Um, are we? We hear a lot about the quality of our glacier plains, especially. Um, are we going to have to deal with storm water at this site and? If we are, if we have that slope, it might be yep. cool to do some stuff, um, and educational too, like we right. could have a rain garden or something. Yes. Um, so I was just curious if all that, and that might come later, obviously. We always have to deal with storm water. I yeah. figured. <laughs> uh, uh, have but are we going to have to like really deal with it? I know there's like a lot of thresholds. Yeah, we've had early conversations with our civil engineer, <laughs> on both on, on water supply, uh, the septic system and storm water, all those, all those pieces together. You do have the advantage of a large site for a reasonably small footprint of impervious area between the building and the parking. <laughs> so we feel like your site has a lot to offer in those regards. So, and a, and a, you know, a rain garden might be, might be um, just a thing as an educational tool. But it won't be, the early indication from Civil is, is it's not going to be a, a large cost or very involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One more back. Yeah, what question back. How much open green space will there be? A lot. Well, have you seen the, have you seen the, the parcel? Yeah. So that's yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, once we get um, trying to trying to put a. Uh, a snapshot on this for you. The question was, how much open green space will there be? Um, the building and the parking together for this roughly 4,000 square foot building that we're talking about, the building and the parking together would take up not even this whole front yeah, section yeah. of the property. Okay, so, so, I mean, we're talking about maybe an eighth of the overall site would be, um, for building and parking, so a lot of the site's going to be open. Is the rest of this grass? Yeah, yeah, it could be uh, meadow grass. It could be that there's a walking trail that's that's developed. Um, there is uh, there were conversations about an outdoor um, gathering space that's a, that's um, adjacent to the building or connected to the building. But a lot of it wouldn't be touched. A lot right. of it would remain as is. Yeah. 
Uh, so this is a comment for the building committee, and it's kind of forming in my head right now um, as I'm talking to John. Um, <clears throat> six or seven years ago, John and I put a 50 kilowatt solar system on the Richmond Elementary School roof. When we did that, um, there were state level funds for doing those type of projects, and I did all the paperwork to secure the town a hundred thousand dollar grant. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the way the industry has gone. Um, a lot of industry players immediately lobbied to get away, get a, eliminate the grants for nonprofits. Um, so where I'm going with this is um, we've had a hard time funding uh, this building, getting the bond passed. Um, but what has happened in kind of the nonprofit world um, for renewable energy projects and uh, construction projects, and I guess I'll reference Middlebury College, is that uh, the nonprofit entity that wants the building. Um, basically finds a for-profit entity to build it to the non-profit specifications. The for-profit entity takes the tax credits that kind of have been gobbled up by the, the for-profit industry and the non-profit ultimately gets the building for a lot less money. If we were to do something like that, we could possibly lower the cost for the town, but we'd have to find investors that would be willing to um, basically invest in the building as a, as a for-profit entity. We lease it from them, if we find the right investors that aren't willing, you know, don't want to make a killing at it, but are want to make some money off it, be able to use the tax credits, maybe we can get net zero, maybe we can get a bill we want for less money. Um, that's a rough idea, just kind of thinking it through. So. I think there's an opening on the uh, building committee, by the way, <laughs> an open seat. Was there a question over there? Um. <clears throat> I like the idea of the building being closer to the road so it's more part of the village um, and the parking back behind so it's not so it's a prominent part of it. But can you do that and take advantage of the slope and be able to have a lower level that's got, um, that's got light to it? Um, you, you know how to read a topo map. Yeah, no, I, mean, I, I don't know what's your spacing on your contour lines and what do you think right. about putting Okay, there's your 50 foot setback. Right? Yeah, there's a 50 foot setback. So, if, have you looked at that so it looks like that would work without having to shut the We've looked at it preliminarily. Yeah. It, it, the farther you move it forward, the less basement in the back you would have exposed. Right, right. The farther, the deeper into the site you move it, the farther it is away from the street, the harder it is for it to hold that edge yeah. um, and have that, you know, town feel. But the more basement you get exposed to the slope. So we'll be looking at that. It'll be a trade-off, and I'm sure there's a right answer. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I have a thought that uh, the ridge is so congested with houses and having everything close. I mean, you're just doing the same old, same old. If you put it way back, it'd be more like uh, Crash Ray Common. You, you, you'd open it up and just have a beautiful historical structure. And as you when you come into it, you're looking at the views and. You, Nothing's going to be obstructed by the building. It's going to be down lower. Yeah. And just put a dead center in, in that lot as far back as you can. And then you got your common and future generations can come up with some other ideas. I think that's also a great idea. I mean, that they're, we'll be looking at this. They're both great options, it seems like. Yes. Are, are you taking feedback for the inside of the building, proposed building as well? We're taking all feedback. Mm -hmm. So. I like the idea the lady over there had about you want to feel a sense of pride or inspiration when you walk in that building. I don't want it to have like that institutional feel when you walk in. Um, and I am I'm a member of the development review board and I spend about probably four hours a week doing volunteering up at town hall doing the work I need to do for that. Um, there is no privacy in the current town hall. It's really hard for me personally to get work done because there's constantly people walking in and out. Um, ours, you know, the people who work there don't have a private space to have a meeting with somebody should they need a private space. So, But on the other hand, I hate walking in a building, especially a municipal building when everyone's doors are shut. Mm -hmm. So I hope there would be a great way to kind of, to um, <clears throat> have a little of both, but not be, you know, I don't know. Yeah. No, that's great. I want privacy, yeah. but not. Pe I don't want people to walk in and feel like, oh, there's nobody here to help me. Yeah. At the same Silent. time. <laughs> Silence while you're trying to find someone right. to help you. Like our current town treasurer, I don't know if he does it because he likes to listen to music or whatever, but he 
needs to concentrate and he wears earpiece because yeah. he doesn't want to hear the background. Right. So I can't speak for him. But. If anybody gets chances to go around, I think what if you go over to Ferrisburg, take a look at theirs when you walk in. And it's an open space, but there's also offices. So, you know, there's there's definitely a more of an open area where some of the people are working, but then there's private areas also in the back. So it's one you may want to just look at what they did when they rebuilt that building. I'm not going to make your job any easier. But, um, <laughs> I'm not so sure I agree with hiding the parking because to me that means putting it behind the building. I'd rather see it in front. It's going to look like an office anyway and preserve that nice slope and the view out in the back rather than walking around behind and having a parking lot there. I'd rather see like a picnic area. Or a sure. We're thinking about the, the side. side. Yeah. 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 Not the front yeah. Because, because, yeah, because one of the things that, uh, that was discussed or has been discussed is, is there a way to share parking with the church as well? Because there'll be, there'll be occasions on both, especially since typically those two functions happen, uh, those two buildings function on different days very often times. So again, any time that we can share resources, it's just going to make sense, uh, both, both from the initial cost to uh, operationally. Do you take into consideration possibly future expansions? Absolutely. We, we have, it is our responsibility, frankly, to look at this building and say, okay, here's what the residents are telling us they need today, and, you know, here's what could happen. We, we absolutely have to look at that fundamentally. Yes? Has anybody talked about a uh, new town informational sign that would be associated with this? A joke, a joke. <laughs> we went through this in Bristol. Well, oh. Yeah, so I, I work in a building that is um, not very accessible to those who have disabilities, and um, I would love for this building, if it materializes, to be not only, I, obviously it's going to be accessible because it's going to be follow code right. but not, but welcoming right. and easy yeah. for people who have those challenges. Yeah. Great. Thank you for that. That's really good. Yes. Yeah, oh, <laughs> well, because well, right you know right now you gotta go out and put letters on it and yeah. why not have a yeah, based platform out front so that you can see it at night when you're right. driving okay. by it. You know the meeting starts at seven, six, not seven. Right. So this is an this is a, an informational you know, um, the information is going to change from time. It's not the, the sign on the building that says, you know, these are our town offices and, and no, community center. Community, community, community billboard. Got it. Okay. Well, you have to consider the neighbors, too. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Yes? I'm a town auditor, and I don't know if anybody's been around. <laughs> We're there at the tables out front for... Um, treasurer is over in the corner that I don't know how he gets any work done. And then if Ken Wheeling is there, he's in the other corner and that's an awful busy place. <laughs> and I mean, we're uh, three women sitting there. So of course we chit chat about this and that and the other thing. And it must be very uh, hard for people that have to work there every day to um, you know, just function. Functionally, yeah. Right. The explanation was that functionally, as a person who works in the building, it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a challenging environment, is what we're hearing, yes? I was just kind of picturing, uh, people were saying that they wanted, like, um, privacy, but having open space, maybe maybe have walls that have windows in them, or glass. Yeah, so sure. That, so then it's... Um, Transparent. You can see people, but right. like, you have the flexible ability to separate yourself if you need to get certain types of work done, but at the same time, it's it's open, it's welcoming, it's transparent. You know, you can see into the building. Sir, yes. Um, just to to speak to what Nan just said about accessibility, just as an example, if folks are familiar with elderly services down in Middlebury, that building, 
Um, it's kind of a we're project in the Finances House. It's a case in point of how to make something accessible, but also built in the vernacular with a farmhouse front and barn back. It's right. twice the square footage of what we're looking at, but but still, it's it's a good way to do it. Yeah. Thank you. Can we really? Oh, I just want to say one word: light. Make sure everything's light. Yeah. Natural lots light. Of light. Lots of natural. light. So lots of natural light, light obviously so. on the in, inside of the building. Yes. Plan for a security system. Should there be? Yeah. I mean, it's just a, you know, we put it out. And one of the things that we had talked about was um, what you, in a perfect world, what you'd like is you'd like town hall, town offices, if you will, library, community space, all in some sense, you know, you can still access the community space when town the town offices are closed and when the library is closed that they are 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 in some some way distinct enough so that so that um, you know the if you will the bathrooms are still accessible even though town halls closed might be something that the town would would want to do um, you know on Saturday when people are riding through on their bicycles I think I'd much rather have them use the facilities at, at the town you know, at the community center than, you know, being in the bushes um, in front of the, you know. <laughs> what? They're not doing it? Other, other questions, comments? Um, I, for me, um, whatever you do for lighting, like in a parking lot or around the building, please make it not intrusive. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Shielded yeah. lighting, yeah. down lighting. Right. We don't need this to look like it's glowing on our yeah. end in the middle of the town. There yeah. are buildings. Right oh, I know, but right. I want to yeah. just <laughs> make the motion when somebody needs yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Them. Well, I was just going to bring up um, just the making use of the outside space as much as we can. So whether it is a porch or it's a patio, um, just keeping that in the in the grand scheme of things now, and you know. Let's say it's a um, it's a patio or something like that. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be built with this project. I mean, it could be a certainly be a volunteer effort to do some of these things. But just keeping that um, in the mix in the design process so that the community is you know aware of a couple of ancillary things that can mm -hmm. improve the outside space. Great. Yes. Um, this kind of goes back to accessibility. Um, I work at my day job. Um, at a municipal facility in South Burlington at their city hall. And I don't know if anybody's ever been in there, but no one knows where to go when you go in the building. It's confusing. It's confusing. So I would love to see it be pretty darn obvious when you walk in this building yep. where the town clerk yep. is, where the library is. Right. Um, so people aren't wandering around like they do. Like, where is, you know, at my office. So um, don't you have a new it's not yet. Probably. Yes, there will be a new building. Yeah. <laughs> Another year, I think we're still. <laughs> oh, yes. If it ends up being two stories, um, the elevators required, there would also be a staircase. And would, can it be open and inviting and a really um, a big feature? Or does it have to have fire doors and make it claustrophobic? It, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> And it depends on whether we include a full sprinkler system in the building or not. You're allowed different allowances, you know, when doing that. And so, and even, even in the case, you, you can open up, uh, uh, you know, an egress stair in ways like you can have the doors held open automatically, and then they have a release if a fire happens and so on. Or you can you can actually have glazing in in a stair like that. Um, it's you know it's fire rated glazing um, and so those are the kinds of things that as we advance design, various designs we'll look into you know um, what the allowances are for an open stair do we need a second stair etc cetera, etc cetera. So. I'm kind of torn because it's nice being um, here at the elementary school for town hall for meetings um, for town meeting day but I was thinking too like if we had, if the building was there now, and we were here, we, maybe people would be like, "Well, we spent all this money, you know." I don't know if it's possible to have a space that could host town meeting, but but not just 
be a big open space, like space. most of the time. Um, like flex space. Right. Yeah. yeah. We range from like 120 to 150 people at the time. So it was, it has, I mean, I'll say that the starting point has been the assumption that, that the, the town meeting would not occur. Um, just based on the footprint and, yeah. and perhaps that that's a that's a future growing number and so on yeah. So to keep the overall building size contained The assumption has been that that meeting space is going to try to find uh, a Strike a really good balance in town for being on the smaller side well, I, was, I was gonna bring one one other thing too about the flexible spaces I'm just looking at ways that we can um, Accommodate those bigger groups at certain times. So uh, I was in a library and they had um you know, it was these really nice rugged wooden bookcases, but they were on these really heavy duty wheels. And so at certain times they could actually, um, you know, open the space up a bit more, maybe fit 20 more people just by moving some of these, you know, nice um, library features out of the way a little bit. Thank you, Will. So um, my family and I, we've lived here for 15 years a month and raised a couple of kids. They're now college but in 50 years from now this town is going to look different a lot of families hopefully you know will come in in these you know open pastures are going to be developed um, we don't have enough indoor rec space this gym is completely inadequate um, we're a couple hundred square feet shy of a basketball court size building why can't we expand a smidge more now because it's going to save a lot more money down the road because we don't even have adult rec space uh, in town to have a pickup game basketball or anything in this town. Um, so I just challenge that we should look at this actually serving the whole needs of the community and not just a handful of people who are not either you know uh, having kids at school or, or trying to raise families and need indoor space in the winter time to do something with their kids who are driving great. Right, right. Great, thank you. Would you repeat that? <laughs> She's wondering, um, should we be also considering um, perhaps um, make, looking to the future and providing for a rec space for, not necessarily for the Moncton that's here now, but for the Moncton of the future that may have more kids on it and they, they want a rec space? Part of the plan. 20 some odd years ago when this building was added on to and renovated was the town anticipated building a <coughs> recreational facility on the Morris Park property. So that was, you know, and that was going to be a full gymnasium, locker rooms, mm -hmm. recreation space, etc. So somewhere that plan is probably still in the office. Right. <laughs> Uh, just just to, for the history's sake, um, uh, there was a, that, that was the, the attempt was to raise one hundred and ten thousand dollars, of which seventeen thousand dollars was raised, which went to the the uh, the oh, no no it didn't go to the parking area that became the um, the pavilion in, in Morris Park. But you're right, the park and ride the parking lot that was envisioned for that became the parking lot. And the uh, detached gym was version three of trying to get a gym attached to the school. Yeah. The first version was a full gym attached, the second version was raising the ceiling, and then you went to the detached building. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I, if there's really no more questions, we're coming on 8 o'clock. I have a question. What, um, what, what's the, what's the uh, square oh, footage of this building? This, uh, I have this no this room. idea. No, you guys are good at that. Actually, tiles. someone can count the tiles. <laughs> uh, clarification, I was uh, suggesting earlier that uh, basement space be, uh, may try to be eventually a community space. Um, if, the, if we work with the grade of the site and the basement is used as community space, whatever space, and it was walked out to grade, and you could walk in from grade up top, would you need an elevator? Would you have to go to the expensive elevator for both yes. levels? Yes. Yep. E even if you can walk yep. out the grade. It's long. Yes. It's yep. long. Yep. Mm. Yep. It's also not very welcoming for those who do not have to be in a wheelchair to walk into it to go into the front of the building and then realize that they have to go out and all the way around. <laughs> uh, so. Stephen, wrap it up. Yeah. So, um, uh, thank you all for coming. Um, 
this is not your only opportunity. So it could be uh, like needless to say, you can find and button hell any of the members of the building committee. Um, we're going to hold another meeting when um, these guys take away all of, all of the input that you've given them and start creating some actual uh, designs of a, of a new uh, community center that will involve the, the town offices and library. Um, so thank you very much. So there will be designs at the next meeting. November 19th, yes, there will, there will be, be designs. designs. Yes. There will be designs and pizza. So thank, you. Out. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Uh,